Let the food be medicine and medicine be food said by Hippocrates 400 years before Christ actually reveals that that we all know the importance of healthy eating since long. But today even the science of nutrition is with lots of prejudice, misconceptions and debates. So felt to throw some light on how and why we should eat healthy. I am Dr. John Souza. I am pharma academician and researcher turned into the learner of nutritional sciences. We eat to provide nutritional and physiological requirements of the body. But unfortunately what we eat is also guided by many other factors including hunger, the appetite, the cost of the food, the taste of the food and most importantly the knowledge of the food. The history of modern nutrition actually reveals that we initially started understanding the relationship between the single nutrient deficiency and the disease caused. Later we use this knowledge for fortifying the foods and later we understood the importance of protein rich food as well as the limitings of saturated fats, salts and sugars. Later we understood the relationship between unhealthy eating and the risk of non-communicable diseases which are called as NCDs. Two thirds of the deaths occurring globally annually are because of NCDs with the major cause is unhealthy lifestyle which mainly includes unhealthy eating, non-scientific eating which actually leads to the condition called as chronically elevated low grade kind of inflammation with the major causes are the industrially produced trans fatty acid, high intake of fat, the consumption of glucose containing high glycemic index, the low status of vitamin K, vitamin D, potassium and magnesium the low fiber intake as well as the low intake of fruits and vegetables. With this actually the developed condition we, we together call it as cardiometabolic disorders which typically includes type 2 type of diabetes, atherosclerosis, hypertension as well as the heart failure and non-alcoholic fatty liver diseases which also includes the cancer as well as various neuroinflammatory and neurodegenerative diseases including cognitive decline and depression. The phenomenon is called as metaflammation and this metaflammation is also responsible for the hampered barrier nature of the gastrointestinal tract which leads to the increased intake of bacteria and their degradative products along with some macromolecules which are responsible for the condition of continuing immuno response which also leads to, to the inflammation. This also includes the conditions like cachexia and anorexia. Cachexia is the muscles wasting while anorexia is loss of appetite due to disease. The functional muscle mass which is also we call it as sarcopenia and substantial loss of functional muscle mass is responsible for the morbidities and mortalities. The good news is we can prevent all these consequences by healthy eating practices in the younger age itself. Another thing that we should understand is the medicines and food share similar molecular receptors and passages which is responsible for food drug interactions and leading to the decline action of certain foods. So to prevent this we should be carefully selecting our food while we, we are under medication. One more thing that we all should understand is microbiota and microbiome. We all harbor more than 100 trillions of microorganisms inside our gut and these microbes all together which are constituting of the bacteria, viruses, fungi and even protozoa we call them as microbiota and their genome together we call it as microbiome. It is surprising to know that this microbiome is constituted of more than 3 millions of genes and it helps replacing many functions of the host and now best considered as the virtual organ of the body. Microbiota is important because it ferments the non-digestible dietary fibers and endogenous intestinal fluid into the substrate which is used by the useful microorganisms producing single chain fatty acids and these single chain fatty acids are mainly the butyrate the propionate and the acetate. The butyrates are main energy sources for the human colonocyte cells. They are responsible for apoptosis. They are also useful for gluconeogenesis and they are involved in glucose and energy homeostasis. Along with this, they are useful 
for the epithelial cells which are involved in the consumption of oxygen. This consumption of oxygen by epithelial cell is important. This leads to the condition called as hypoxia which is very useful because it maintains the oxygen level of our gut which prevents the dysbiosis further. The propionates are released into the liver where they are also involved in gluconeogenesis. Along with this the propionates are useful for satiety signaling by reaction with the fatty acid receptors of the gut. Acetates are released in the peripheral tissues wherein they are also involved in the cholesterol metabolism as well as lipogenesis and they are useful as per as central appetite regulation is concerned. Good news is we can repair this disturbed microbial flora by administrating useful microorganisms with the adequate quantity which confers the health and these microorganisms which are particularly bifidobacterium and lactobacilli are called as probiotics and these probiotic microorganisms do require specific food for their survival and growth we call it as prebiotics. It is also important to understand what is healthy eating and healthy eating is all about having healthy dietary pattern since from the birth lifelong inclusion of nutrient dense food in our diet which should be sources of vitamins proteins and other dietary components meeting fruit groups the typical food groups are starchy food the fruits and vegetables the protein sources and dairy staying with the calorie limits with 2500 kilocalorie and 2000 kilocalorie per adult male and female respectively per day along with this we should be limiting the saturated fats sugars and salt saturated fats are limited to 30 and 20 gram respectively for male and female per day while sugars are limited to 30 gram per day and salts are limited to 6 gram per day. The dietary pattern lifelong actually begins from the birth with exclusively feeding the baby with human milk and when it is not available with iron fortified nutrient formula we can continue feeding a baby on the human milk for first six months which can be further extended to the year of five years or even more along with this baby should be provided with supplemental vitamin d since birth and one should be introducing the diverse nutrients since from the six months of the age including the food containing zinc and iron as per as nutritional and calorific requirements of the woman during before and after the phase of pregnancy and lactation is concerned there are more because it is required for the health of mother as well as for the growth and development of baby particularly mothers are supplemented with folic acid before conception as well as to be continued in early trimester which prevents neural tube defect increased intake of iron iodine and choline should be given but this should be with the consultation of obstetrician no alcohol and one should be limiting the intake of caffeine containing foods and beverages as far as the healthy dietary pattern lifelong is concerned it is all about having the good balance of various food groups which starts with 6 to 11 servings of starchy food and one should be constituting the starchy food as a base meal one should be eating more of a whole grains because whole grains are more nutritionally rich as well as they do contain the dietary fiber we take more time in digesting dietary fiber and with which we can feel full for longer along with that two to four servings of fruits and three to five servings of vegetables one should vary fruits and vegetables one should be eating whole fruit fruits and vegetables are important because they are more than nutrients and they are the good sources of other bioactive compounds including carotenoids phenolic tannins alkaloids and organosulfur compounds along with the fruits and vegetables another important group is the protein source two to three servings of protein source which is mainly composed of meat the poultry the fish the eggs the dry beans as well as the nuts one should be varying protein routine one should eat more of a fish one should eat oily fish once in a week because oily fish contains long chain omega-3 fatty acids whenever we eat any of the protein source we should be eating it grilled or boiled instead of fried 
along with this one should be very careful as per as the selection of oil spreads are concerned. One should be replacing butter with vegetable oils, mainly corn, canola, sunflower, safflower and soybean and not all because these are the good oils and they contain lesser number of fats which helps us maintaining cholesterol. One should be also careful about drinking at least 6 to 8 glass of fluids which is mainly water and also can contain fat free milk along with sugar free dairy like tea or coffee. More than this one should be avoiding alcohol or should be limiting it to 14 units a week because alcohol contains more number of calorie and it is deleterious for the health also. So to conclude to see that we can achieve and maintain the health one should be needing to prioritize the nutritional policy which is based on various indicators like DRI that is dietary reference intake and HEI that is healthy eating intake along with the exploring of the science of food by means of various interactions with the molecular targets by means of random clinical trials and this trusted science should be communicated to the public and most importantly we all should be following the healthy eating practices lifelong along with the sound sleep and the exercise thank you